Howdy, Big Ed from Wales again. Today is chest and biceps day. A lot of people like to say it's chest and arms, but over the years I've changed. You know, it's a case of um, sometimes I'll stick the buys on with the chest after the workout. And again, 10 to 15 minutes, as long as you hit it with super high intensity and you go for one strength movement where you're trying to build and gain strength in the biceps and use a bit of blood volume but always keep the weight reasonably heavy and high hit it hard and get the hell out of there because um, it's one body part that is overtrained by far too many people and like we said it does get indirect stimulation to your bodies when you're doing your back workouts which um, can become real heavy and hard and therefore they need that time to recuperate and recover in between workouts so what I wouldn't recommend you do is back to back days of where you hit back then you hit your buys the following day or conversely you hit your buys as hard as possible so that deep deep muscle soreness the DOMS is in there delayed onset muscle soreness and you do your back workout but obviously it's your buys that are going to give in first you're not going to optimize your back so I would keep them three days or so apart or until the uh, the muscle ache the DOMS subsides and you're able to hit each body part and give it the attention that it does need um, <clears throat> for chest I've always gone heavy and basic always considered uh, myself to be a reasonable bencher did flat bench press for the first five years approximately training um, after that I sort of came away from it a little bit um, due to niggles and slight muscle tears on the outside head of the pectorals muscles um, over the years I have sort of um, stretched it and torn it minor tears um, may I add nothing to keep me out of the gym or doing chest work for three to four weeks or more and therefore I've always been able to sustain and keep gaining with chest because of um, listening to my body and reacting in the appropriate way and possibly for a couple of months pulling back and adding some supersets in where pre-exhaust with an isolation movement before moving such as um, incline dumbbell flies or cable crosses or pec deck before moving straight into a press whether that be um, a dumbbell press, a barbell press or whatever. So flat bench I don't do anymore, I haven't done that for five years since I had a uh, torn pec. Um, what I will do is do some incline presses, but that's even, you know, picked up with in terms of sort of injuries over the years. Um, and a lot of that I attribute towards hand position as well, which when you start out you're trying to really fill the upper pecs, put more stress on the pectorals muscles and less on the tricep and therefore the grip width is relatively wide so if you see the two rings either side of the Olympic bar possibly I've gone as far as putting my point in index finger on those rings and if you do that yourself you'll see it's a real wide grip puts lots of stress on the outside head but when you do build the weight up um, especially when you get yourself lean in body fat and in terms of body water you do risk yourself injuring yourself and therefore I've come away from that a little bit all in said, I will most probably still, from time to time, have a six, eight week block of strength building where I'll move back up to three plates, 140 kilos for the incline press, um, which I did top out at um, in previous years. My personal best is 11 reps with um, the incline. I should add, I, I personally use suicide grip. Um, it feels far more comfortable, and in terms of sort of me, I feel it activates the chest and pectoral muscles. Um, a little more than wrapping the hands around plus causes less aggravation to the uh, to the wrists and allows me to progress more you must be safe when doing this you must use a spotter plus on top of that you must use weight that is not too in excess of what you can handle um, again you need to find that out for yourself exactly as you're building up week by week I would um, err on caution and go with a wrapped around the bar grip as opposed to the open-handed grip um, but that's something you'll develop over time. So we're going to do some incline pressing. Then we might add, get you onto a super set of flies followed by incline pressing. I do a lot of incline work these days because my lower chest is well developed, as is lots of people's. Um, and the emphasis really is on, upon filling up the upper chest. That's what gives um, the illusion when you've got sort of a V-neck shirt on a jumper where you've got two slabs of meat sort of poking out. Nothing worse than having two hanging, sagging boobies, which are a little bit too low, even though it's muscle tissue. Um, it's not the prettiest sight in the world, and therefore, 
what I'm iterating is, I'm reiterating again, is balance. Balance is the key. So if you find that your lower chest is far too developed, then get on and do a lot of incline upper chest work, possibly finishing off with some dips, um, parallel bar dips, absolutely fine on your chest workout, where you're leaning forward, so you're pulling the, the, um, the triceps, the back of the arms, out of the movement, and you're actually activating the chest a little bit more. Again, what you want to do is go for, well, you need to experiment with this, is the closer you come, so the parallel bars, they sort of transcend, they come closer in at the top of the bars and they move upwards from each other. I will go with a wide grip to hit the up, outer pecs, leaning forward, so you're going to hit um, the lower chest almost like a decline press, but you can really finish the chest off with that movement and again add a little bit of weight around the waist um, as you progress week by week. Again, we're going to go up there, and after we've hit chest, we're going to go with the buys. The buys, as you see, are going to be very heavy and very basic, and it is what has built my arms at the moment to around 19, 19 and a half inches pumped, and that is in the off-season, in reasonable condition, 10, 12% body fat. Um, again, don't overtrain them. Don't do what I did in the first three years of training. I've trained six days a week um, and hit every body part three times in a week. Um, I did that for two years and built a certain level of strength, muscle endurance, but never ever developed the size that I really wanted to until I backed away from it and came back down to four day week training. So you're splitting everything a four day split, which is um, recommended if, from my personal experience if, if you're in the gym to increase size, strength and shape your body. You stay tuned, have a little look what you think of the, uh, of the chest workout. Drop me a line and I'll sort of uh, give you tips and pointers as I'm doing the workout um, before sets, after sets, just to sort of explain to you a little bit more in detail about uh, why I do what I do and how it's affecting each of the um, an anatomy and the physiolog physiological, I'll try that word again, aspect of, um, of training. Again, now is time to engage the brain. A lot of it is mental, is psychological. You need to sort of set yourself goals before you head up to the gym, have a clear vision of where you want to be, where you're going to be at following the workout, and what you need to do, the building blocks and steps, in the following six, seven days before your next, next check workout um, in order to make continual progress. And for all that comes down to rest, nutrition, what you're going to do to recover the muscle that you just absolutely fried. You stay tuned, get back to me, over and out.